Today I'm going to build a working Lego ant farm with seven different levels to test how smart ants can actually be. And if they can make it through all seven levels, they're going to get a special surprise. Starting with level one, which I built using a bunch of 1x4 bricks and a panel of clear pieces in the front so we can see what the ants are actually doing. This is going to be the main room in the ant farm maze, and I've provided everything a young battalion of ants might need, like a water source, a nest underground, and even a bonsai tree I stole from a Lego set. And we're going to introduce our first ant, Ann. Ann is a harvester ant, and harvester ants can crawl miles in a single day. So I have no doubt her and her friends will be able to find the exit, which will lead to the next level. Oh my gosh, they're so active. Bro, they're so fast! Oh, close it, close it, close it! <laughs> the exit for level one is right in this little pond. As soon as they tunnel down far enough, it'll lead them into the next level. Now, we just put the lid on, and we pray to God that none of them escape. And to make this challenge more realistic, I'm going to give the ants three strikes. So if they fail at least three levels, they won't get the reward at the end. It took the ants a while to get comfortable in their new space, but after a few hours they seemed to settle in and got started exploring. And that's one thing I noticed about the ants, is that they were constantly looking for a way out, when in reality all they had to do was tunnel down into the gel pond to reach the next level. They pretty much all settled into the nest I built them. There have been a couple that have tried to escape and two that succeeded. After around a day, I noticed they were starting to look hungry. So we dropped in a slice of organic fruit to test their appetite. And although they seemed excited at first, they really didn't seem too hungry for apple. After a few more days, the ants had finally started tunneling towards the doorway. And it was so cool to watch how they all worked together to move one tiny chunk of gel at a time. I mean, just look at how strong the mandibles on this ant actually are. I wouldn't want to get pinched by one of these. Little by little, they were slowly making their way towards the exit, with the exception of a few ants that just really didn't want to help out. But after a good day of tunneling, they had finally made it down to the door. So it was time to build level two. To make it so I could see into this build, I bought a bunch of these clear Lego panels so we can see what the ants are doing. I also bought a bunch of these little tubes because what we can do is snap two together and then create little tunnels with gel inside them for the ants to go from room to room. For level two, I want to have the first challenge, which is going to be a timed door, so it'll be on and off for certain periods, and when it's on, it'll actually cover a prize door, so the ants will have to figure out how to get into the second room. So we got the base built up here. I'm going to take off the glass in the front. I built in this little Technic hole so we can actually add a door by connecting together a few of these Technic lift arms to an axle. We can just slide that through our little Technic hole right here. If we connect our motor here to our battery box, we just need to connect this to this guy. As you can see, now we can actuate this. We don't want to squish any of the ants, so we're going to make this go really, really slow because ant safety is our number one priority. I also left this little hole in the wall for the connection to the tube that's going to lead back to level one. So I just got to build a few more walls in there to kind of route the ants through to the top, and then we connect it and have them test it out. There's going to be a few little rewards inside this ant farm maze, but the big prize is going to be at the end in the final room. I'm going to add a tiny piece of fruit in this little room here. Now we can put on the glass, and we're going to attach level two. Let's see what they do here. And it only took a few minutes for a couple curious ants to come and see what was going on. I'm not really sure if this one was quite ready, but gravity gave him a push either way. Now that I had some ants on the way, I turned on the door timer, and a few minutes later, it worked. And it really looked like our first ant was going to miss it, until he came back with one of his friends, and barely made it under the door before it closed. Whew, that was close. And now the ants had a couple options. They could wait for the door to open again, or they could start climbing up the wall and exploring. You can see here how the first one climbs up the wall to check it out, and then turns right back around to come back down. And it really looks like he was passing off information to his friend here. See that? That was a trade-off of information. I decided to leave the door running for a bit to see how many ants we could get in, but after a few minutes, the EV3 died. <laughs> At this point, I just left the door open to see what they would do. And after they again rejected the bit of apple I gave them, I decided to consult my friend Jeremiah from Lights, Camera, Ants to ask him a few questions about harvesters. What's up, guys? Welcome to Lights, Camera, Ants. I have a total of 15 different colonies, some of which you can actually see right here. Can you give the viewers some information on like what harvester ants are? Like their behaviors, what they do? Um, let's go ahead and take a look at harvester ants in the wild. This colony you see right here is actually a colony of Florida harvester ants. Here I've placed some seeds for them to harvest and it didn't take long at all for them to start collecting. This is exactly how these ants get their name harvester ant. They exit the nest in search of seeds and once they find one, they pick it up and run back to the nest with their newly found food. With strong mandibles, the workers can crack open the seeds and eat the soft insides. This is fed to other workers, the larvae, and of course, the queen herself. Interesting. Dude, how long have you been working with ants? I've been keeping ants for the past seven years. What I like most about it is just seeing how different ant species act differently to different things. Taking the time to take a look at little creatures that most people just walk by or step on. You know what I mean? What would be like a good prize for them to win? Like what's their favorite food once they get to the end of the maze? From what I hear, harvester ants actually tend to like fruits. 
I've never tried it myself, but I wonder if that statement is actually true. Give it a try and let me know. Thanks, man. Check him out if you haven't seen his channel already. It's Lights, Camera, Ants. He feeds them different things like Jello, which is really interesting. Check out his channel, link in the description. Now I had some ideas on what to give the ants in the final room. And a little while later, they had started tunneling up to the next level. Something that's kind of interesting is that most of the ants are still stuck on the walls down here and haven't climbed onto the chain to get into the gel. So it's really only the strongest, most committed workers that are in there digging. It's so cool to watch the little mandibles just chew off little chunks of gel. But they're super close to getting to the top, which means we need to build the next level. My plan for this level is the ants are gonna have to work together to move a scale so that it'll open a door. And since we're gonna do this electronically, we're gonna need a color sensor. I built in a little hole so we can add our color sensor on one side because one side of the scale is gonna have a little block on it that will hit the sensor. So we can lock that in the back here. For the actual scale itself, I'm gonna link together some Technic pieces with a couple of color platforms. Theoretically, this should be level now. Hey, add a few bricks to the bottom of this on each side. Now, we have colors. And so when we add this to our setup like this, we put this thing in the hole. Now, if we start this thing out completely balanced, completely, I said completely. Eventually, once they all start piling up on this side to get whatever food we put on there, this thing will sink down and trigger the light sensor, which will open the door. I'm just gonna use the same motorized door design we just built and add that to the top of this. I'm gonna use a little bit of crystallized honey on one side to sort of tempt the ants, and hopefully that'll get them up there. We'll just need like 20 ants to move that. Ants are pretty light. We might need all the ants. We're just gonna place this right on top of here so it connects to that tube there. Plug in our motors and we should be good to go. Now we just wait for the ants and see what they do. As the ants started crawling into the next room, I realized they were having just a little trouble getting out of the pit. So I dropped in a little Lego missile piece so they could climb up easier. I was also waiting for just the right moment to make a classic joke. Oh, uh, uh, there's ants in my... No, no. Oh, uh, no. But I didn't get to. After a while, we had our first pioneer ant start climbing up to the honey. I wasn't sure if he could actually smell it, or if it was just chance that he didn't instead climb up the blue platform, but either way, once he made it to the top, he literally didn't care. And after several more ants made their way up and then just left, I decided to add some seeds to the honey to kind of bribe them onto the scale. And to my surprise, that did absolutely nothing. At this point, I thought it was just too hard of a climb, so I added a rubber Lego bar piece to hopefully make it a bit easier for them to climb up to the top. After a few days, we did finally manage to get five ants on the platform, but with their combined weight being a whopping 0.5 grams, I decided to give them their first strike. Hey, I mean, it's their fault for not getting 50 ants up on the platform. <laughs> Definitely not my fault for not thinking it through when I designed it. <laughs> no. They'd already been in the ant farm for 12 days, and at this point, I really wasn't sure if they'd even be able to finish it. But either way, it was time to build the next level. For level number four, I want to build an anthill that gets more and more narrow as it goes up to the top to see how small of a space these ants can fit through. So I've sort of built up this case here, as you can see, and on the sides of this, I'm gonna connect some snot bricks so we can actually build sideways. These are snot bricks. Snot stands for studs not on top. We can't just connect two of these and expect a brick to go over the top of it because as you can see, the studs do not line up. So what we do is either put two plates between these bricks or we can put four bricks because it matches up. And that's the perfect distance for us to put a couple bricks like this. And as you can see, now we can build on the side. And to make it so the walls continually get thinner and thinner, I'm gonna use some bricks and some slopes, and we're just gonna taper in the slopes by using different sizes. And now, if we snap these onto our bricks, boom, and then we just put the glass right in the front and fill a little bit of this with gel. The specific type of gel, ant farm gel, which is made of, I think, agar. This will give them something to dig through, and it also provides nutrients to the ants. We're just gonna let this cool, it'll take about 30 minutes, and then we'll add our ants. So here we have level four. We can attach this just to the top of here. For this level, they just have to make it through the gel and then climb, and we're gonna see how narrow of a space they can crawl through. I really like that chain. Look at them moving that around. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Which is really funny to watch. Look at him, he's like trying to go through it. This time, the ants made it through the gel way faster than I expected. And when I got back the next morning, they had already made it up into the anthill. And with the brilliant addition of sand on the wall so they could climb up, they didn't seem to have any trouble at all fitting through the tiny gap. All right, so I guess that answers that question. Honestly, these ants are surprising me so far. I've already had six escapees, and all of them have just climbed out in the tiny gaps where the tubes connect. So if anything, this level just reaffirmed what I already knew. Well, that was pretty quick. Looks like they are ready for the next level. For the next level, I wanna build a maze that the ants will actually be able to navigate through if they're smart, which if they've made it to this point, I think they are. And since I wanna give this a round structure, I'm gonna start by locking together a bunch of these little one by two hinges to create a large circle. We're gonna wanna be able to see the ants, so now we need to build a circle of glass. That's a little bit harder than it sounds. If we start with a bunch of these clear glass panels, then we can get sort of a circle. We just need to fill in the gaps. We wanna make sure there's no little gaps that the ants are gonna crawl through. That's all we need is just a bunch of ants running around the studio. 
Boom, there we got a circle. If we put this on the bottom, we need to add some snot bricks around the corners so we can actually keep this a circle. And then ideally, that locks it down. Okay, so for our maze, I wanna build it sideways and then just basically sandwich some pieces in between here. So if we snap together a few pieces like this, create some sort of shape like that, and then we'll add a few plates onto the top of it, and then some clear tiles so we can still see the studs. Now this guy can fit right in here because it's the perfect length, and actually, the friction won't hold it up. <laughs> I don't want it to all fall out, so I'm gonna use a little bit of sticky tack on the back of the pieces. So now we just have to build up the rest of this. Now that we got all these pieces attached to here, I think this thing should just go right on there. Dude, how perfect is that? <laughs> Now we just gotta add our exit and entrance and fill in the walls and we'll be ready to test it out. All right, we need to remove this cap and add the next level, but there's a bunch of ants by the cap. So we also need tweezers. Do I need to be not holding the camera right now? Shoot. Oh, they're all over my hand. Oh my oh. God. Oh! <laughs> now we have level five of the maze. Look at how many are swarming in here. Oh, there's the first one in there. The first ants into the maze immediately took the easy route and consequently fell down to the bottom. Here we go. Let's get into the next step. Now you gotta climb up, buddy. No? Okay. Well, you tried. You can tell they're trying. They don't know where to go, but they need to actually go up here, around this way, and then the path will kind of be lit up for them. With more and more ants flooding into the maze, the stakes were getting even higher, because the single ant that completed it would have the privilege to go through the next level all by themselves. And while there were several ants venturing up in the wrong places... No, wrong way, buddy. The majority of them were just getting caught up in the bottom. <laughs> Oh no. This guy over here is trying to cheat. He's trying to eat it. He's like, is this edible? <laughs> You're so close. It really is a maze. Like, they're not able to solve it. It's so funny. He's supposed to jump over. Yeah, yeah. He's sucking himself up. He's like, I gotta go back. Oh, you do it. You do it. Come on. You do it. You got this. You got this. Nope. <laughs> then, a few hours later, we got this beautiful run on camera. First, he just has to walk across this section upside down. And then after making it to the top, he was super close, but he fell off. And this is where you can really see the perseverance of this ant, because he keeps climbing up on the wall without the studs. But now he's in a bit of a difficult position, because the only way to make it to the other side is to walk up the slippery glass. At this point, we've seen a lot of ants give up and turn around, but this guy keeps going all the way to the other side, climbs up and over, and falls down into the end of the maze. And you may notice there's actually already another ant here, and that's because a few ants had already finished, but since the exit wasn't open, they later turned around and left. We have an ant that has finished the maze, finally. We just need him to go up into the tube so I can trap him and attach the next section. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Nice, he's in there, ha ha. But now that they've passed this level, it's time to build the final challenge, level six. For level six, we're going to go night vision. I'm gonna build a nightscape to see how well ants can traverse in the dark, and then we're gonna use a night vision lens to see what they're up to. I'm not gonna make it super easy for them to find the exit. I'm gonna put it all the way down here, so they're gonna have to fall down and go down the cliff. First, I gotta make this rocky terrain. To build rock faces, I like to use these slope pieces because you can kinda combine them in such a way it makes it look like rock. Now that we've got the rocks built up, I'm gonna add a few blocks that are gonna obstruct the path in the dark. I don't really know how well this is gonna work, but I assume it'll throw them off a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna add a few more details, kind of finish off the rocks, and then we'll add this to the farm. And we're gonna install this right here. I have no trust for this thing at all. This is like our third guy to finish the maze. The other guys gave up. And since there's only one ant that's actually finished the maze, we have our prize room down at the bottom, which connects back to level one. So once he finishes, we'll open that up and let all the other ants in to enjoy the prize. So let's turn off the lights. All I had to do was open up the gate and he was ready to go. This looks so sick in night vision. And keep in mind that other than this glow in the dark moon I added, this ant is navigating in complete darkness. And I'm no ant extraordinaire like my friend Jeremiah, but it really seemed like this ant was more nervous than the ones going into the other rooms. But nonetheless, he just kind of explored his way forward inch by inch until he came to the first obstacle. And I think this is really interesting here because you can totally see how he's using his feelers instead of his eyesight to feel around where everything is. Of all the other ants I've seen, it really seems like this guy's using his feelers the most in the dark. Once he got down to the slope, all he had to do was just crawl down the edge of the ravine until he fell into the exit. And for a while, I was really confused because I could see right where the edge was. But then I realized I was using night vision. <laughs> so props to this guy for navigating in the dark. He kind of just retraced his steps to try and find the original exit, but upon finding that the gate was still closed, he made his way back to the edge, and just when I thought he was about to crawl down, he fell. Hey, you made it. 
And just like that, the bravest ant had fallen right down into the prize room where once I opened the gates, a special prize was waiting for all the rest of the ants. And after 20 days working together to solve a Lego ant maze, I think they deserve the pot of fresh cut blueberries and grapes that I put inside the treasure chamber. And I can finally confirm that ants do like fruit, just not apple for some reason. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so many of them. So the ants completed the Lego ant farm maze with only one strike, which means they're pretty smart, I guess. Is that what you're doing? Oh yeah, this took like a month. <laughs> Make sure you guys check out this video's sponsor, Crazy Kai's Brickling Store, for your Lego brick needs. You can check them out by clicking the link down in the description or this button right here on the screen. I gotta be careful not to bump this or I'll have ants everywhere. <laughs> I'll talk to you in the next one. <laughs> See ya!